Hello and welcome back. So I do apologize for this video coming in later. I had meant to do this earlier, but I've just been really busy at the start of February, but I'm doing it now. I'm going to try to get this out to you today. Again, sorry for the uh, delay of this video. Um, a few things have changed. I got a new chair, so now I can do the uh, little thing that I like to do. And then I also got a new bookshelf. Uh, I'm not sure how well this is gonna, like, in terms of, like, frame-wise appear. I think it's gonna be okay. But yeah, now I have more room for books and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, yeah, let's just get into the video. Uh, January, it was a, it was a pretty good month. Uh, not my best. It was kind of weird. Because I had some books that I really loved and then like I had a DNF in there, but let's just get into it. Vicious by V.E. Schwab. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this book. I gave it five stars. I absolutely loved it. The morally great characters. Uh, this one was kind of weird for me though, because as you, as you guys know, Darker Shade of Magic, not my favorite. Really not. So I was really scared reading this. I absolutely loved it though. I will 100% be reading the sequel. And I saw, I'm not sure if this is like a mistake like they did with uh, Lee Bardugo's third book and The Six of Crows, which she's not writing a third book, but Goodreads put it up there. So I don't know if this is a mistake or it's confirmed, but evidently there's a third book in the series coming out. I haven't obviously read the second book so I don't know how well it wraps up so I'm um, yeah I'm, I'm, it, I just love this book honestly five out of five The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness I actually really really enjoyed this book this book is huge though but I felt like I finished it in a relatively timely manner uh, I really liked it it took me a bit to get into the writing style because this is first person but the character in which we we'll follow follow Todd, he's he's not well educated. So either a lot of run on sentences, words that are misspelled, you know, improper grammar. Which at first I was like, oh no. But then I got the hang of it and actually kind of helped me read really faster because there were fewer breaks in terms of periods, commas, stuff like that. I actually really enjoyed this. I can't remember if I gave this four or five stars on Goodreads, but this is landing in like a 4.5. 100% will be reading the sequel. This was really a pleasant surprise. The Similars by Rebecca Hanover. Ooh, this book I DNF'd at around 75% right there. And for me to DNF a book this far in is really, really, really rare. Uh, yeah, I didn't like this book. I felt like there were too many things going on. There was this introduction uh, to the similars. Uh, so there's an entire subplot about whether or not they're human or they should be allowed to go to school. There's like a attempted murder subplot. There's a romance subplot. There's a, a subplot involving uh, the school and its leaders. And I'm just like, oh, wow. Like, all those things are interesting, but you just bunny hop from, like, them so often that it felt boring, almost. Because you could never really stick to one and really get to care about one subplot. So you're like, why do I care? This is boring me. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, that happened to me, so I DNF'd it. I was going to try and finish this on Audible because right now I have, like, three or four credits uh, <laughs> that I haven't used. I was like, let's just use one of those up since I'm still paying for the service. Uh, there's no audible or audio book for this book. So I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna stop reading it. I really, really, really wanted to enjoy this book. It, it was such an interesting, unique concept. I was like, let's do it. And it just let me down. It let me down so much. I didn't care about anything. I didn't care about the attempted murder subplot. I don't I didn't care about the romance subplot. I didn't care. And this book it it does something that I felt like I need to mention. Um it the school that they go to, it is stated about a thousand times how inclusive this school is. 
I'm not even kidding. It's like, this school is so inclusive. We welcome LGBTQ+, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and then that's one of the reasons why when the similars get there, there's like this huge debate of like, no, oh, we're an inclusive school. We have to include them. And there's this whole ordeal. And I felt like something really interesting could have been done with the inclusiveness of the school. Uh, I felt like the author was trying to do a bit of commentary, but I didn't really get that commentary, if that makes sense. Um, if anything, it got annoying how many times it was mentioned how inclusive this school is. Like, I felt like, you know, I was just being, like, led on a college tour, and, you know, the person doing the tour was like, no, we're inclusive. There's that building for that group. There's that building for that group. We're so inclusive. We're inclusive. Like, they have to mention it. And I think I would have liked the inclusiveness a bit better if it would have shown it a bit more than telling me a thousand times how inclusive this school is. And then we never really see how inclusive this school is. We never really see that. I'm just like, so you just annoyed me for no reason, essentially. <laughs> and that's what happened. That's what happened. It just... It just fell apart. I'm not going to be reading the sequel. I'm not even going to be finishing this book. It it just fell apart. A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. This book, I loved. I really like this book. I like the characters. I like the plot. I like the twist. I like the ending. It's just, it's, it's so good. Um, and there's multi multimedia elements in here, so you can see, like, text messages, um, uh, her capstone logins, like, projects, stuff like that. Uh, that was really cool and unique. Uh, the one thing that I will say is, uh, that this book is published by a British author, I believe, and so the original text takes place in the UK, but for the American edition, this edition that I'm holding, it uh, takes place somewhere, somewhere, Colorado. It takes place somewhere in the U.S. And this isn't like a big deal. I, I just, you know, want to mention it. There were times um, where it didn't feel like I was in the U.S. essentially, in terms of how the characters like said things or in terms of like location. Like I never pictured this being in the U.S. Um, I'm not sure if I pictured this being in the U.K. either. I just felt like she should have kept it in the U.K. Like I don't care if I read a book in the U.K., <laughs> you know? Uh, it, it doesn't matter to me. I'm not sure why she changed that really. Um, but yeah, overall, this is a really good book. Uh, I would highly recommend it. I think I gave it four stars. So yeah, four stars. And there you have it. That is my January wrap-up. Uh, not the biggest wrap-up that I've done, uh, especially considering I was on break for the majority of the month of January. Uh, there were three really good ones and then one DNF, but I'm happy with those numbers, actually. Um, there are a few books that I am reading for school, so that'll help with my Goodreads thing. And I recently just made a school, uh, sub file in Goodreads. So you can, if you want to see what I am reading for school, what I've read for school, uh, you can go there, look in there and see where it's tagged and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, overall, this is a really good month. I'm not complaining, so. Thank you as always for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. And it means the world to me if you follow me on all my other social media, such as Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Those will be listed down in the description below. And I will see you in the next video. Bye!